Hello and welcome to a review of Artificial Condition by Martha Wells, the second book in the Murderbot series and honestly another absolutely delightful reading experience. Now this, while it is the second book in the series, I have mentioned this when I reviewed All Conditions Read, that if you are a fan of the Star Trek series like the original Star Trek or Next Gen, I highly recommend the Murderbot series because Martha Wells does an exceptional job about making each book in the series self-contained. Uh, there's enough background information for you to get an idea of what's going on, but each individual book is, in a way, its own episode and introduces new characters while building, while it does build a little bit on previous relationships, overall is its own self-contained adventure and is just absolutely wonderful just like the original Star Trek series where each episode was its own self-contained thing. Now like if you were watching one of those episodes would you get a little bit more enjoyment if you had all the previous background information and the like understanding of the character interactions with each other? Absolutely! You know more is more and definitely would make the it more enriching. But if you just randomly came across one of these books in the wild, I can fully recommend that you just go ahead and dive into the world. And if it is for you, then maybe try to find the rest of them. But you do not have to necessarily read these in order. It will make it easier for you and maybe just a little bit more enjoyable. But if you come across these in the wild, you don't have to wait until you get all of them. That being said, Artificial Condition, we find the murder bot who is a free sec unit, so a security unit, so that means they, their original purpose was to be, in their opinion, a murder bot. It is to protect humans from each other, from themselves, and from their own stupidity, and they normally take contracts and protect humans while they're out doing, like, space stuff, or planet stuff, or just people stuff. It is, you know, what you would hire a security detail for except it is a android. Again, like Data, they are mostly mostly robot but with organic parts as well and Murderbot is a free agent. They have hacked their governor module and are no longer controlled by the company that originally created them and also is a free agent now because they were freed in the previous book. So the company no longer controls them and they are trying to figure out why they are free, why they hacked their governor module, and also what happened in order to bring that about. And so they are trying to go back to the planet where, in their understanding, everything started, which is Ganaka Pit. And in order to do so, and in order to maintain his free status as a low profile, because he is technically considered a rogue sec unit, which is very bad because um, you know it is basically a murder bot that doesn't have any controls or regulations which for most humans would find that very discomforting and so they are trying to get passage to Kanaka Pit but they find out that the only way that they can gain access is if they get a employment contract and they find this out while they're on their way to the planet and that is because they managed to book passage on a research transport that actually happened to be a very sophisticated spaceship. Uh, I think the closest thing I can think of maybe would be like Kit from Knight Rider, except instead of it being a sports car, it's a giant, giant spaceship <laughs> where they're like smart and autonomous and can do all the stuff. That gives Murderbot pause because Murderbot's like, oh no, this, this spaceship could totally like end me. But Art, because it's a research transport, uh, actually is very altruistic, very much wanting to make sure that their crew is safe and so helps Murderbot get to the planet and then subsequently uh, they end up getting a contract with a group of researchers that are trying to get their research back from their previous employer and he contracts with them in order to get the employment contract in order to gain access to Ganaka Pit and also like hijinks ensues. I would like to state that I found it brilliant and surprising 
that this is the first instance where I have encountered an author that deals with a tertiary gender in such a nonchalant way. And I say that because if there are other species <laughs> and other races and like aliens out in the world, gender is a very human construct and understanding. And we as humans like to have everything in neat little boxes because it helps us navigate and understand our world. It helps us like deal with the existential dread of being alive. <laughs> there not really being a whole lot of direction on this planet. So if we were to do space travel and encounter other life forms, trying to put it into our understanding of gender just seems small and small-minded. And I've not really encountered that in other works. I have, I have definitely seen othering language, so calling races outside of a humanoid bipedal figure it it very frequently uh or you know in a non-othering sense of they because you know if it's like a, a robot or an android of some type that doesn't have any kind of heteronormative physiology so physiology for us to put them in one of those boxes so the fact that martha wells just it creates this creates this tertiary gender and just totally just does it like this. It's just super even. And so we get introduced to Rami, who is introduced as Tracera, which is a non-gendered political entity from some specific cluster. And throughout the entirety of the book, Rami is referred to as T and Ter the entire time. It was just so effortlessly placed into the book uh, as far as references go, it's just like, it could really be that easy. <laughs> it could really be that easy to respect people's uh, gender. But maybe, you know, that's me as someone who has that ideology already, that it can be that easy just to be respectful of someone's preferred identification. Um, so it was super easy for me. If that is too woke for you, you're probably not going to like this series. So I just thought that that was really lovely because I think that Rami was technically still human, but their whole society was set up differently. And so they had to be addressed differently. I think the closest thing that could be in a modern interpretation would be the, the Zer and the Zay, uh, where it was X E or Z E or Z X. I think that was a thing I think in the 2000s, but I haven't really seen instances of that since then. So I don't know if it's just because it's been more accepted um, to, to do they them and the tertiary that we are currently trying to acclimate to as uh, our current society goes. But I just thought that that was lovely and it's the first time I've really experienced that in science fiction and it was just very refreshing and I also just really loved the ship as a character. I have a lot of fond memories watching Farscape where the ship was alive, a live entity. I mean, it wasn't quite the same as, you know, Knight Rider or Kit from Knight Rider, but it was still like a living entity. And I've always found that kind of trope where the ship is its own self. I've always found that just like really interesting and endearing. Like the ship is not just like this big box that you got to ride through space in, but is also technically part of the crew. The ship just keeps the crew safe. And I kind of like that. So I do highly recommend it. It's a short, quick read. It took me about an hour and a half uh, to read it. If you have an Audible premium subscription, I believe most of actually these books in the series are available on Audible for free uh, as part of your premium subscription. So that might be a free way to enjoy it. Um, if you do that, the listen is about like three and a half hours. So just a light and easy thing and then you don't have to spend any credits on it because it's free. But I really enjoyed it. I'm going to continue reading this series. I absolutely love it and am delighted by it so far and I again highly recommend it. And thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!